good moment. Now's a good time to start coming through that index in the back so you can pick out a favorite hymn. I heard there's a few uh, of the younger folks here with us that maybe want to request a hymn. You'll want to do that sooner than later since you're going to be dismissed about halfway through. Here's some of the guidelines. We do ask, we have a few that are not in the German Trinity hymnal that we have in case you all can't come up with enough to sing, but I'm sure there's plenty there. But the Trinity hymnal here, if it's in here and we don't know it, you have to come sing a solo, so choose carefully. Okay. We, we will certainly do our best um, with all of that, and we're look, we look forward to this. Is there someone that would like to get us started with a first request? Michelle, 42. And what is 42? Okay, El Shaddai. Let's do uh, verses 1, 3, and 4. Four sixty seven is all right. We have a rule you can thank my father for. You cannot sing this song sitting down. So please stand and join me in singing Wonderful Grace of Jesus. We'll sing the first and last verses. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall this praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free for the wonderful grace of Jesus. Reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression. Greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise his name. 
wonderful grace of Jesus reaching the most divine by its transforming power making him God's dear child purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity and the wonderful grace of Reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression. Greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise his name. You can have a seat and we'll catch our breath. Who's next? Yes. 100. Holy, holy, holy. And thank you, Janice, for your prelude today with this. Let's do verses 1, 3, and 4. somebody under 20 this is a good spot any of the younger ones here have a favorite don't be shy we'll give you an opportunity here then I'll move it around okay Miss Joyce I think I saw your hand huh. 629 which is okay what a friend we have in Jesus we'll do the first and last verses
I say, okay, this young gentleman right here. 128. And what, what is 128? God moves in mysterious ways. Okay. That one's not jumping out as one that I know, but we can see if we can get through it. It also may be a familiar tip. Yes, are, are you ready for your solo now? All right. We'll figure this out. Yep. Let's do verses one, three, and four. Ready? God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take the clouds ye so much dread. Our shall break in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. Millie Claire. Okay, I guarantee that is not in the hymnal, and I guarantee that that is not on that PowerPoint right now because it's on my computer back there. It's a song from VBS. I am a C, I am a CH, I am a C H R I S T I A N. And I have C H R I S T and my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L L Y. That is, I will live eternally, and we spell it out. Now, we're going to take it easy on them, right, Millie Claire? We're not going to hit this full throttle and go super fast. But it kind of goes like this. Maybe you can pick up on it. And we, we also clap, if I recall. It goes like this. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-A-R-T And I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y I am a C, I am a C-H, I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N And I have C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-A-R-T And I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y now, if we were in VBS, we'd be going about 25 times faster about now. All right? But thank you, Millie Claire. Yes, Mr. Casey. Okay. Six forty-two. Let's see what that is. And after this, then we will ask Ben to come and give our uh, prayer of intercession. 642, be thou my vision. Okay. We'll sing one, two, and five. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my Yeah. 
Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this service, the blessing it has already been, and I pray that it would continue to be a blessing for us. But ultimately, Lord, we pray that it would be glorifying to you as well, that you would make us tonight the fragrance of Christ, and that it would ascend to you as we fulfill our ultimate purpose for which we were created by glorifying you in psalm and song. I pray that you would continue to bless this service, Lord. I pray that you would bless every person in here, but not everyone uh, in here only, but also those who are watching uh, via the live stream. I pray that although they cannot be here because of illness or whatever reason, I pray that you would um, uh, comfort them with your spirit, Lord. I pray that they would um, be here in spirit, if not in reality, that they would Uh, praise along in their hearts as they watch the live stream, Lord, and I pray that you would bring them back to us, Lord. I pray that that those who have gone out from us, Lord, for more um, wrong reasons, Lord, those who have left the church um, over apostasy, Lord, or those who have been backsliding, I pray that you would bring them back to us as well, that you would convict their hearts and bring them back to us, Lord, and that they would glorify your name as they are intended to do as well. I pray that you would help our church leadership today. I pray that you would help all the deacons as they fulfill their duties, as you would bless the elders and bless Pastor Thomas, Lord Jesus. I pray that you continue to bless Brother Bill as he leads us in psalm. Thank you for his ministry tonight, Lord. I pray for our nation, I pray for our local leaders, our state leaders, and our national leaders. I pray for our president, Lord. I pray that you would bring him to yourself. He stands right now a wicked man and and justly deserving of your judgment. But so all, so were we all, Lord. We are no more wicked than he before you called us, and we pray that you would do the same for him, that he would become a a righteous man before you and that you would save him and that he would guide our nation into all righteousness. I pray that you bless our world, Lord, as well as our nation, that you would bring revival to this globe, Lord, that you would have your kingdom spread to every nation, every tongue, every tribe, that the gospel would be gloriously proclaimed through missions, through personal evangelism, Lord. I pray that you bless that, Lord. Again, I I pray that you would bless tonight. I thank you that we have been able to gather here tonight. Hear our words of song. Hear our prayers. Hear uh, the lesson that we will hear tonight. And bless our fellowship afterwards, Lord, the ice cream social that we'll have after. I pray that you bless that as well. Help that to be a sweet time of fellowship. I ask all these things in Christ's holy name. We're going to continue singing a few more songs before we dismiss the young ones. So who has another request? Jay. 601. What is 601, Jay? Jesus, Savior, pilot me. Okay. We'll see if maybe we recognize the tune. I'm not familiar with it. Can you play that through one time for us? You're going to. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Sounded like just an intro. All right, thank you. First and last verses. Jesus
I saw Mrs. Epps, yes. 618, eye on the sparrow. 618, eye on the sparrow. Just the first verse, okay. Yes, Lisa. 500, Rock of Ages. 500, Rock of Ages.
Okay, last chance for Littles, because we're going to be dismissing you in a little, just a moment or two. Okay, Mr. Rhodes. 44, how great thou art. And we will stand and sing this one also. Let's sing the first and last verses. Okay, I see a young hand. We'll do one more and then we'll dismiss the, the young ones. 482. Come unto me, ye weary. All right. And we'll ask, whoever's up, we'll ask them to play it through one time for us, please. Sing the first and last chorus. Ready? Come on to me.
can be seated. We're going to dismiss the children now to go with Miss Merrily. The Rosses, I believe, are back there waiting to work on the uh, rehearsal. And we're going to ask Ben to come up and share a devotion with us. Okay, I'd, I'd like to ask you to turn in your Bibles to two places, to Genesis 3 and to Revelation 22. Genesis 3 and Revelation 22. Tonight being the, a night of worship, uh, I figured I would uh, focus on asking the question, why should we worship God? Why should we worship God? And it's a short uh, little message I have for you this evening. Uh, and the first reason, that, the first and foremost reason we worship God is because he tells us to. Psalm 150 starts with these words, praise the Lord. Now that uh, literally in the Hebrew is hallelujah. And in English, we combine that to one word, hallelujah. But if you look at it in Hebrew, it's actually two words. It's the imperative verb hallelu, which just means praise, and yah, which is the shortened version of uh, the Lord's name, Yahweh. So it's praise the Lord. And that's a command. It's not a suggestion. So that's the reason we worship God, but, and not to infer that that reason is not good enough, but why else do we worship God? Other than the fact that he is our creator and, and it is his due uh, that we perform any responsibility he lays on us, why else do we worship God? Well, I'd like to uh, answer that question tonight. Uh, and, and we're going to start in, by reading in Genesis 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, made to the, and he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. And God created man with mind-boggling benefits, benefits that in our fallen world we can barely imagine. And if you read all these first three chapters of the Bible, you would come upon all of these benefits. And we don't have time to do that, so let me just list a few of them. Man was created in a very good world. Genesis 131 says that God saw everything he had made, and indeed it was very good. The literal Hebrew word is good in the highest degree. Man was created in a good world. Man was created with dominion and power over every other earthly creation. Genesis 1.28. Man was created in God's own image. Genesis 1.27. God helped man start reigning over the creation. Genesis 2.19. God had special care for Adam's well-being and made him a companion by creating the woman. 2.22. God gave man the tree of life that he might eat it and live forever, Genesis 2.9. God gave man his communal presence and company, Genesis 3.8. And despite all these benefits, we just read here the very first sin. Man casting off God's goodness and saying, I don't want that. I want more than what you have given me. I want to be like you, and not in a holy way. Adam was not saying, I want to be like God in the way that we are commanded to aspire to be like God. Not in holiness, not in goodness, not in justice. He wanted to be like God in, in power and in, and in uh, knowing everything. He did not want to wait for the benefits that God would give him later. He wanted them right then and there. John Calvin says that Adam manifested contempt for the great liberality with which God had enriched him. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, prayed to his Father, not as I will, but as you will. But the first Adam scorned his Father and said, not as you will, but as I will. And we carry on Adam's legacy of sinfulness to this very day. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
Every day in our own lives we sin. We continue to scorn God in the same way that Adam did in the garden. And what we deserve for that is clearly laid out in the scriptures as death. Ezekiel 18.20 says, The soul that sins shall die. Romans 2.8 says that those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness will receive indignation and wrath. So we don't just deserve temporal, physical death, but we deserve eternal death. Because of our sin, we deserve to burn in hell forever. Our sin is serious. I was able to speak to the youth group in Sunday school this morning, and we talked about the seriousness of sin. And we saw in Psalm 6 how David weeps over his sin, how he's afraid of God's judgment, because God's judgment for sin is severe. But God did not allow us to stay in the condemnation that Adam was in. Perhaps the most beautiful passage in the Bible, Ephesians 2, 4, and 5, says that God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Just as death entered the world through one man, Adam, so life entered the world through Christ Jesus. I don't have time to go through the details of the crucifixion, to have an elaborate exposition of all that. I, I trust that you know that well enough if, if you're here on a Sunday night. Jesus Christ took his sins upon, uh, our sins upon himself. He nailed them to the cross. He forgave us of that. Even though we spurned God, even though we refused the benefits he gave to us, we, he still rewarded us with his righteousness, not because of anything that we have done, but because of himself. And even though we cast it aside all the goodness God gave to us, what is our final state as believers? Flip to Revelation 22. And remember, we're answering the question, why should we worship God? Revelation 22. We're going to start in verse 1. And he showed me, this is John speaking, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Even after man's sin, think back in your own life, even after all the sins that you have committed in your past, perhaps before conversion, even uh, through all the sins that we even now commit despite our conversion, and even all the sins that we will commit in the future, Despite the desert of our sins that is death, despite our casting off of God's goodness, God has restored all of the benefits that Adam, Adam had in the garden and even more. God will give us eternal life symbolized in this passage by the tree of life. God gives us his communal presence which Adam had in the garden, signified by the throne of God and of the Lamb. God gave us regeneration, showed in the river of life. God gave us all of these benefits. And I say all of this to say, this is why we worship God. Because he created us, but also because in spite of all that we have done, he has given us everything. He has given us all the benefits we cast off. And that is why we worship God. That is why we lift our voices in praise of him. And folks, I think we are in sin, especially looking at this revealed will of God, this, this, the scriptures, and seeing the first state of man and the last, in spite of all the evil history that has happened, we get all the benefits because of what Christ did on the cross. And I charge you to use this and to think upon this as we continue to praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you have died for us. I thank you that Christ nailed our sins to his cross. I thank you that he imputed his righteousness to us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died to make us godly. 
I thank you for this. I pray that we would think upon this as we continue our worship service this evening. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I make a, a request, Bill? Absolutely. Can we do number two? Number two. What is number two? I think it's praise the king. Praise the king. For some reason, those pages are stuck in my hymnal. How about yours? Oh, worship the king, all glorious above. We'll do one, five, and six. Oh, worship the king, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing his power and his love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days. Pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. could ask, I, I'm not sure if they're set up there or not, but uh, the words for we will feast in the house of Zion, if you could get that queued up and ready. Okay, we'll do that in just a little bit. As well as come behold the wondrous mystery. We'll keep those on reserve. Any other requests? Yes, Lindsay. 691. 691, which is? forgot there's one more rule what? we'll sing it I will this is a tough one for me so I'll, I'll be up here y'all just keep going okay <laughs> let's do one three and four
Yes. Six ninety three, please. Okay. Six ninety three. Blessed assurance. See, Jim, you were right. We had some backup songs in case y'all didn't bring any. I don't think we're gonna need them. We'll do the first and second verse. Actually, we're gonna do all three. for a couple more. Yes. 455. 455, which is? And can, and can it be? We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5.
we have time for one, maybe two more. Yes. 197, comfort, 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 ye my people. And I think I could do with hearing this one played through. Sing the first and last verses. Ready? Okay, why don't we close with that one? Well, Eric, in the back, what was your last one? And then we'll do Miss Kay's song. Uh, 486. 486, which is? Uh, God is merciful to me. I couldn't quite hear that, but it's God be merciful to me. And I think I need to hear this one. verses 1 and 5. Miss Kay's favorite? 457. 457. And we will close with this. We hope you have enjoyed it. Um, it is great to just come and, as Pastor said, sing the songs of Zion and lift our voices. Um, sometimes 
this is not a cut on Pastor Thomas, but sometimes we as humans like to talk and hear ourselves talk, and we talk and we talk and we talk. Here, somebody's laid it out for us, and we can return these words to God. So let's close with 457, and then Jim will come and lead us in prayer and a benediction. Let's stand and sing for this last song. Come thou fount of every blessing, and we'll sing verses 1 and 3. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, thank you for the opportunity to sing praises unto you. You're worthy of all our praise, and we were created for this. You've put a new song in our mouth, even praise unto our God, and many shall see it in fear and shall put their trust in you. Thank you, Father. You've told us not to be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. So your people have sung tonight, and uh, I pray that your hearts, our hearts might be open to you so that you can fill us with your goodness, your grace, and your glory. Thank you for just the prelude of glory that we have when we lift our voices and join the angels and all the saints triumphant in praise unto you. Rehearsing for heaven, yet meaning what we sing down here now. So thank you for the opportunity of praising you. Thank you for your love to us. Now I pray that you would dismiss us with your blessings tonight. So may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord with gladness. Thank you.